I used to always struggle with, am I a good person? Yeah. If everything I'm doing online is bringing other people down. I mean, Christ, I was making videos on people like Jojo Siwa, who at the time was like 14, 15. <laughs> anymore oh this is the thing because i i saw the the caption said youtube and i was like i do still be making youtube videos because yeah. i have like a live channel where i cut up twitch streams right you haven't but uploaded to your main channel for about a year i think you? we're the same right like yeah. you, it's been about a year for you now yeah probably come get, getting on to about two how yeah. do you feel about it i want like creatively i want to make content again like, I don't it's, wanna... it's about waiting for the spark because like I've, I've had this moment recently where i wanted to kind of have this more down to earth vlog series because when i was making youtube videos it was just commentary and chatting shit about people online and you know this yeah. it reaches a point where you're like this doesn't mean anything yeah like what am i doing other than just kind of pulling other people down and trying i just don't to do give things. a shit yeah about exactly any of it. yeah exactly like I've, I've made what 10 videos on trisha paytas i understand at this point that trisha paytas just be doing things for people like me to make videos right, about right right um but then that kind of like that kind of that kind of if she's doing stuff for people to call out, mm. she's making her money. You're 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 building a yeah, but way. it's all a but bit fake making... at that point. Yeah, it is it is yeah. And I think I started wanting to make things that had weight to them. Yeah, and and felt like projects. Right. Um. And I kind of had an idea for a video series that could be feel like that, mm -hmm. but I'm finishing an album first. Yeah. So it's like you know one thing at a time. And I think that might be the same thing that you're kind of coming to terms with. It's that this takes time. Yeah. So does touring. That yeah. takes so much energy. It's not just touring and doing shows. It's the adrenaline dump where you're like, oh God, now I'm not in front of a crowd. Mm. How do I feel about this? Yeah, that's such a um, come down, isn't it? It's uh, weird. Yeah. It's really weird. Yeah. Um, do you, do you think you'll get back into making content? I know no, never on my main channel again. Really? I don't is that think just so. gone now? I, I don't know. I don't want to say it's gone because I don't want people to just flee from it. Yeah. Because it is technically still my biggest platform. Right. But I just, I'm, a, a lot of the content, I look back on it and I'm, I go, cool, I did that. But then if I want to look at videos I made two or three years ago that I was actually proud of, I'd look at like the Love Island series I did with Will because that was just fun. Yeah. Or like some of the E-Boys videos, which were just fun to make. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember enjoying every second of them. Right. Whereas commentary, a lot of the time I'd just be sat in front of my computer going, write, write a script. And there was a point where I'd drink alcohol to like try and feel more into a recording. Really? Like I'd have a whiskey. Really? Yeah, because I was like, then I'll feel like a little bit loosened up and I can make a few more jokes that aren't in a script. Oh, wow. But I, yeah, and I think when you're getting to that point, it's like, I should probably retire this and, yeah. and work on something that makes me happier. Did you, I, I think that's what you're touching on there. I had this and um, I spoke about this on Diary of a CEO, but I had like this really awful moment where it was like, I think I'd done the Zoella advent calendar video. Which was huge. And that, that popped. And then... And then I did like a follow-up video because you know if something works, you just rinse. You've got to do it. it. Like I remember, I, I lived with Inaba, and he was like, "If you get one, you need to find a way to make it three. Right? Because then, like, if you can turn it into a three-part series, it will just do incredibly. Exactly. And it's still that still works yeah. to this day. But I remember there was something Zoella did about a pantry, or she brought out a book or something. And I remember I was like, "Right, I'll just repeat the formula, take the piss out of this book." Yeah. And the book wasn't too bad. It was like a cooking book or something. Exactly. And I remember I was sitting there trying to pick holes in it, like which is already so fake because you're actively like, how you're can I, how can I make something. this shit? And then I remember I would turn the, I, I would literally be not depressed, but I would be like sort of downbeat. Turn the camera on and be like, hey, yeah. Yeah. and then you turn the camera off and you're you just miserable. look at yourself in the viewfinder and you're like, this is just not yeah. me. Like, well, I, an interesting thing I'd like to know. I, I. I I like this because whenever I meet an asshole that is just like mean to people for no good reason, I always think about this, which is that you've, you've definitely been around people on MDMA, right? Mm -hmm. Which is just, it boosts your serotonin to the highest amount. Yeah. They're always nice. Yeah. And they always are like trying to impart their love or how they're feeling or their happiness onto you. Mm -hmm. But they're like, oh, I love you so much. Or like, I want to, let's go fishing mm -hmm. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, those are people with, fishing. well like I, I remember someone explicitly saying that to me. Um, <laughs> the, their serotonin is at, is at the highest amount they are the happiest you can possibly be as a human what they're doing at that point is they're not focusing on themselves they're not laughing about people and trying to bring others down mm. they're trying to bring other people up to that level yeah so by that logic people who are assholes and dickheads to people online must be miserable right and that is such a refreshing feeling. Because yeah. it makes me realize that these people online that are just 
dickheads for no good reason mm. or like tweet about certain communities or talk about certain communities must actually look at themselves in the mirror at the end of the day and go, I hate myself. Yeah. So I, I live by that logic. And I know for a fact when I was making videos that was just bringing down other people, I wasn't a happy person. Right. Categorically. And it doesn't surprise me now that I do feel more content that I'm just not attracted to the idea of making a video on someone's poetry. Yeah. You know, or yeah. like so the, a video that someone made last week that I think isn't that good or like had a few mistakes in it. Yeah. People make mistakes. That's bang on. That's bang on. I think since, I, since I've had this podcast and I, I tried a, a number of series and different projects that never really worked. And yeah. I think there was just a massive element of like jealousy and me calling out like exactly. Alfie days and, and stuff it's like, so yeah. good to hear mm. other people that have been there say that because I was such a bitterly jealous person right. and i still i still have issues with jealousy but right. i think you can turn them into positive things yeah yeah like yeah. to understand that it is just an emotion that people feel yeah and that it's okay yeah. um i i think especially with like happy hour and stuff like that it made me really happy because i spoke to my friends about the fact i was coming on the podcast right and to them it's mainstream right because like these are my friends that like know that i do stuff online but they're like oh yeah i listen to the happy hour podcast oh, I, li I i met someone once i became friends with them and they were like I knew of you already because um, I listened to the Happy Hour podcast and I remember Alex was on it and he mentioned having another podcast and I went and listened to it and thought, that other guy's a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> and then we became friends. That's what like. people say about you, like, yeah. Stevie. <laughs> just, just for the perspective of all this from someone who doesn't upload that kind of content so the listeners will understand, all of that was just letting us know that we should all be taking MDMA. Is yeah, no, yeah no, that's, okay, cool. Everyone no. at home needs I was just, to be I was just trying to follow along. At all times. No, cool, good. No, I, I think it's just like... I just had to make sure that we're all on the same page. There's you... very few podcasts I do where I'm not on MDMA. Okay, cool. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I, I was just making sure. The table. <laughs> no, but it, it makes me happy to see... Because I, I remember... I, just, I have a memory of my friend, Ollie Gunson, who unfollowed me on Instagram. Um, what? Yeah, weird. Wow, like, Ollie. He only follows like 20 people now. I, that's a direct call out. Um, congratulations on your engagement. Um, and, and he, he actually uh, follows me, and I've never yeah, met him. No, bastard. He came over and showed me one of your videos when we were like 15 years old, and right. I think it was a 25 things everybody oh, yeah, hates yeah. kind of oh, thing. God. Which oh. I remember at the time, I was like, "This is great," mm. and I've known you ever since then. Mm. Um, it makes me really happy to see that you you managed to make something that is positive ultimately, because you really, I really like the. The shows you do where you bring on people who just have like great stories. Right. Like those are such good, they're just good content. And yeah. And they're so like overwhelmingly positive. Right. I think it's great to see that you've managed to bridge a gap over from like doing a thing which was popular. Yeah. And then turning that into an audience for something which can be positive. Right. I'm I glad you said that. Yeah. Because that was something that I struggled with because... Like most of the people I've sort of slagged off, I've yeah. then had on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, but then as I've gotten older, and I've really, because I like genuinely, like, I think Steve, you might disagree, but I have always just been a nice guy, like behind the scenes. <laughs> Why would but, I but, disagree with <laughs> that? <laughs> I'm your friend. Help me. He's a <laughs> <laughs> but but then like online I would just turn into this different person like yeah, was I was like, the same yeah it was and weird. it turns it turned me into a toxic person yeah there was a period of time especially over COVID where I really hated the person who I was right the way I acted with people in like my personal life online everything I was just a very jealous bitter toxic person right and I only really started working on that towards the end of COVID and it, mm. and it also through music like when I was writing music and working out the person that I was I used to always struggle with am I a good person yeah if everything I'm doing online is bringing other people down i mean christ i was making videos on people like jojo siwa who at the time was like 14 15 right i remember i made a video an entire video over a dm i received from jojo siwa basically calling me out for being so negative and i was like oh look at this i'm making another video on you now and i was like they're a child yeah. like why am i what am i doing what am i doing as a 20 21 year old mm. like making content on kids just trying to do shit on the internet yeah 100%. Like it's naff yeah um so do, do yeah. you regret any of your videos or not See, the thing is now it's like, do I regret having the platform that I have? Because I don't. I, I, I really like the fact that I can just make things and there's a group of people out there that will listen or want to watch it in the same way that you have that now mm -hmm. uh, with, your, like, with your new audience. Um, I regret some of the jabs I took. I think there were some videos that were made in good taste. Mm. I wish I could have made less videos on people that were under 18. Because right. I, I think a lot of people are kind of thrown into social media yeah. and don't really get the chance to decide they don't want that right right well, before even realizing what it can do to you your brain yeah and i only knew that as an adult who was brought into social media and realized what it was doing to my brain right. when i went into therapy so yeah. it's like 
I would I regret all of those. Mm-hmm. I'm I definitely regret some of like the 2017 2018 era because that was just like a like that was around. I mean, iDubs apologized for that era, and yeah. my content was never really that extreme. Nah, yeah, but I still think it was just negative, a but lot more negative. It, it, that that we're talking about like the 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 actual like the commentary era yeah. where it was just like get anyone you can at yeah. any point. And it, it would like it would be a dog pile. Yeah. It would there would be every week there would be a new person that would get you views. Yeah. And has, it was just a nasty time. Has there ever been a video that you felt like you had to delete? Just yes, I deleted like... videos. Um there was one on Jasmine Bean that I remember deleting. Because I used to just like I remember I used to write videos about like eclectic people or like alternative people i'd make a lot of videos on that because you put in someone that does something slightly differently to the, mm. the larger population as a title and a thumbnail and then people will go that's something i'm not used to click on that and then it's just a, a joke at the expense of someone who is already a little bit of an outcast yeah yeah and i regret those videos a lot mm. um but, i, think, I yeah. think it took me a long time to realize that when I was I was calling I always thought I was calling people out for the right reasons. Yeah. But then it took me a while to realise that, like, t- so like I, I made a video about a girl who shags her dog, right? Yeah. Now I would still make that video now because yeah. she's shagging a dog. That is, <laughs> yeah. that's, but, that's fair. But then like I might have done a video where it was like meet the man who loves or like is in a relationship with his car. Well, he's mentally unwell. Yeah. Do you know, do you know I know what? Do you see? What and I mean? also, like, it's like. At that place, who's he hurting? Yeah, exactly. If you fuck your fear, fuck your fear. Like, it's not a problem. But, <laughs> but if but, you fuck unless you name no. your dog, oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. We've got some content. <laughs> 